All right. I think we are good. I think we're okay. Okay. All right. Oh man. Uh I I don't even know where to start. Uh I I just woke up. I I say I say that I woke up of uh, I think I've just been thinking about this conversation for like an hour. I I mentioned I mentioned I I had a power nap. I I lied. I I was trying to power nap and then I was like, how is this conversation with Bo is going to go? Like I I I was kind of half excited, half worried because I know that you're probably one of the most wildest Romans out there. Uh, I cannot expect or I cannot predict where the conversation is going to go. Uh, so I'm going to be very honest. And I've already told you this before. I have prepared little to nothing. That's how I for like it, dude. You know, it's organic yeah. conversations. It's real. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's that, that feeling of this, um, this energy of of a topic to emerge or an insight to emerge just from, you know, either body language or just from something that, you know, someone said and immediately it sparks this, uh, this gunpowder and you want to act upon that gunpowder and it makes you think, okay, this comes up. I want to work on it. And I feel like that represents Rome a lot. So I see a lot of Rome's features in how you interact with people. And I think that's why uh, people know you as the architect behind the Rome book club and just being this, Amazing guide for anyone who is trying to emerge for anything and everything related to Zettelkasten within the realm of a knowledge graph. So, might as well get right into it, Bo. Welcome to Rome FM. Finally, yes. After <laughs> after how many months? <laughs> after how many months? Oh, oh my goodness! But uh, how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing great, and you know, I, I think you're absolutely right. You know, Rome has changed how I behave in the world. And it's, I think that is a great starting point in my opinion, because, you know, it, if it changes how you think, right, if it change, if, if this note taking tool changes how we think, then of course, how we act is going to change as well. And, and I, I think for me, that's been the biggest sort of aha is again jumping jumping on these calls and again thank you norm it's like I, I i tweeted something about it earlier but we've been having this conversation since august of like dude we've got yeah. to do this podcast and you know i i wanted to make sure that if i was going to talk about something that i could back it up i knew that if i wanted to mm. talk about something i wanted to show like hey here's the fruits of my labor and and even though I was ready in August, I still needed to sort of go through all of this. And it's been a hell of a journey. I'll tell you that. You know, I, I haven't expected any of this. And I'm, I'm doing my best to be as graceful about it as possible. And, you know, sometimes I'm wrong and I misstep, but I'm willing to sort of learn from those, from those things. And sometimes I'm spot on and, and I'm lauded for it. And I'm just, I, you know, I keep looking looking at it like I'm the least qualified in my opinion <laughs> to be talking about any of this you know I mean I don't have a college degree I mean I dropped out of school at 10th grade you know what I mean I've, I don't even have a high school education you know and it's oh. just yet I've been uh, you know diligent enough and 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 I've asked different questions in order to sort of reveal different ways of using Rome that happen to be quite effective and yeah. Now I, I don't want to maybe get a little bit too personal there, but you did mention you just. I love you personal. Uh, Listen, cool. you know. All right. Okay. I love. Yeah, like, yeah, I, mean, you I was going to tell right. you, like, dude, ask anything. I'm an open book, and okay. yeah. Yeah, no, let's. You've just touched on this. Like you said, you just dropped out of school. And not to say you just dropped out of school. You dropped out of school in tenth grade. I just realized that. Because this is the first time that we've formally talked to each other, although, I mean, we had a video test and everything, uh, I've never really known much about you beyond the tweets that you've done all surrounding the Rome cult, all surrounding Rome. And as much as this note-taking tool is affecting uh, our behavior, as you've just mentioned, and it has for me as well, 
Like I, I, I don't know how to describe it any more than I have been trying to impose Rome's philosophy via its features on everything that I observe in real life. And I'm not sure if that's a, it's a projection of, oh, my mode of thinking in Rome, I'm taking that out into real life. And what is the, what emerges from that is, is strange to me. It's unusual and it takes time to get used to it. So therefore it's affecting my behavior. So there's this like difference between who I was before I, I used Rome and then who I am after. And that difference is exciting. But anyway, um, you said you don't, you didn't finish high school. I don't know anything about you other than <laughs> what you've been doing with Rome. You know, I know, uh, I know you're, you're shirtless half the time, uh, you're acting and everything, <laughs> but I, uh, um, um, yeah, I mean, where do I begin? I mean, I had a tough, tough childhood, you know, and I, and I'm not a victim at all. And I, and I truly look at like, you know, a lot of the things that happened in my life have formed me and prepared me for everything that has come afterwards. You know, first time I ran away from home, I was 13 years old. You know, I ran away from cross country from Atlanta to LA when I was 16 with my girlfriend, you know, got her pregnant, got an abortion, you know, drugs, alcohol, you know, dropped out of school, you know, um, mental hospital, you know what I mean? Like juvenile, uh, juvenile hall, you know, youth authority in LA. And it's just, you know, running around with the gangbangers. It's just, it's been a hell of a ride. And, mm. and I, I, I don't know sometimes why I was fortunate enough to sort of get plopped. You know, I went to rehab at 22, you know, and it's just, I don't know why I was sort of like picked from this litter of, cause I know where I was supposed to be. You know what I mean? I was supposed to be dead. Like all the people that I ran with, you know, like my best friend growing up passed away from drinking himself to death, you know, January or December of last year, you know, a couple mm. months ago, you know, before that, you know, my best friend in rehab, she OD'd from heroin. And it's just like these, these, this was my like crew. And it's like the longer that I survive, the more that I'm just like, what the hell is going on? Um, so again, I was sort of plopped from this to that and, you know, it's been a hell of a journey ever since. And I don't, I don't take it for granted that what we're doing here in this life and what we're doing here, you know, in this brief moment that we're here together, it's, I, I, I don't take it for granted. And I think that's a lot of the sort of driving force for me and, you know, everything that's happened in my past past has been important. And I think a lot of that, you know, is, is funneled into all the things that I do today. Um, yeah. You're a good listener, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just really genuinely curious because um, I remember that tweet. I, I remember that tweet that you, you mentioned uh, about your your best friend uh, passing away. I, I think it was a, I think it was a, in response to somebody else or something along those lines. Yeah, um, dude, that, that dude, I mean, we did so much crazy shit together. And it's just, you know, there was, I thought we were going to talk about Rome and shit, but this has gotten like, <laughs> I mean, there was, uh, there we, was, we, 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 <laughs> There we was, can stop if you want. Like, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. No, no, no. I mean, I love this because that's part of my story. Yeah. Um, me and him got into shit that, like, we would always go, oh, this is for the books. This is for the books, you know? And it was, it's like, there's certain people that, like, I, I mean, I, I look at myself now and it's like, I, I look at this polished, you know, a uh, 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 polished version of me today. And I go, this wasn't, this, like, no, no, you don't understand. When I was 16, 17 years old, it was like, there would be days where I wouldn't talk to people. You know what I mean? Where it was like, I would, you know, I attempted suicide multiple times and it's just, it's, people don't see that. And, yeah. and he, and, and, and there's certain people in my life that were there for that. And, and to have that, have them pass away because of this, you know, 
addiction to alcoholism or drug addiction. It's to me, I'm, I'm fuck dude, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I have to say those are some heavy memories to carry, especially when you have someone who is so dear to you to live their life out with a, a phase in your life where you were going through these days where you're just not talking to people or you're just going through these days, you know, in filled with substances or filled with, uh, filled with, shall we say, making decisions that may not be so healthy for you in the long term, um, that, that do not reflect who you are right now, right? Like we can, we can speak about Bo at that time as someone different at this point, because you know, you can now safely reflect on, uh, on that point. Cause I can, I can tell from how, you know, you're talking about those experiences, you carry them with great pride because that, that makes up the part of the story that you are living right now. So, you well, know, it, I, I really it, appreciate it, that it, you it, could it, share. It felt, you know what it felt like? It felt like, you know, I, I grew up always feeling like I was a part of, you know, apart from, you know, and there's, there's been certain people in my life where it was like, no, we're kind of in this together, you know? And, and the craziest thing is that the people that I felt like that with the most have died because of drugs or alcohol. Do you know what oh. I'm saying? And it's just like, why is it that, you know, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. I was quiet. I was, you know, it, it was, it was, I was very introverted. And yet the people that were, I was drawn towards, it's like the ones that I felt most comfortable with have all passed away. And, and I, 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 yeah. Here's a question for you. If we take a step back from, 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 from the, the heaviness, heaviness of, got emotional of, of that, that. Yeah. like kind of, Hey, we're, 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 we're in the depths right now. We're in the depths right now. And I think, I think Rome can help you with, you know, facing these moments. Um, are you sad that they are gone? No, or no, wait, no. or, yeah, or, yeah. or are you sad that you are unable to create more memories with them. No, I'm, I'm pissed. Stage. I'm pissed because I wish they had a way to be able to think through what they're going through. If that makes sense, I wish they had. I wish they ah. had Rome. I wish they had a note taking tool where they could write and journal freely and and really get down to what they're really thinking about. You know, right? Now, let me tell you this: when 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 Lydia passed, right, she OD'd from heroin. I went to rehab with her. Like she was, we both completed rehab at the same time. It was like, basically I, I got into rehab about five days before she did. And every day I was telling myself, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. And it was, she was the one that sort of, uh, I, I got sober in Temecula or, or I went to rehab in Temecula, um, um, in, in California. And I remember they had this beautiful, like banister, like this outside patio. And it was probably, I had probably like a week or two weeks clean or whatever. And I was laying down. I didn't talk to anybody. And she came out and she sort of like looked at me and, she, and I was like laying down on, on the, on the bench or whatever. She put her he head on my stomach and she was like, I'll stay if you stay. And, and it's like, I never said anything to anybody, but she goes, I'll stay if you stay. And I was like, I'll stay. And it's like we both sort of got clean together. You know what I mean? We both did 90 days in this in this rehab or whatever. Right. Fast forward seven, eight years later, and it's like she relapsed and now she's, you know, drinking again. And it's it's she 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 was an old heroin addict from Tennessee, right? And after about eight, nine years or whatever, she was living back in LA and I was in LA as well. And I used to go over to house all the time. You know what I mean? It was like, she, I mean, she, like she would drive me to the airport. You know what I mean? Like, like that is like the testament of a friendship in Los Angeles. If they'll drive you to the airport at some ungodly hour. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, I loved her to death, you know, and it, and it was like, she scored heroin one more time. 
after like after she stopped at, at 22, you know, when, when in rehab with me, it was like eight nine years later. She scored heroin f- again for the first time, and that's what took her out. And the reason I'm saying this is because by that time, no one no one was around her. You know what I mean? It was just it mm. was you know what I mean? She was stripping again, and she was like you know what I mean? Whatever, right? I love strippers, by the way. Like I, I, my relationships with strippers are the best, and I don't I don't go to strip clubs. It's just I just happen to be drawn towards those types of women. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think of I think of uh, 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 what's her name from uh, Crime and Punishment. Um, um, I'm sorry, I don't watch the show. So I, I don't no, know no, Crime and really Punishment is Dostoevsky's <laughs> book. You know what I mean? Um, so so, anyways, it was it was it was as we were clearing out her apartment in Silver Lake. It was me and her dad. And her stepmom, and by that time, no one was around her or whatever. And we were clearing out her, her her apartment, and I found the journals. I found a couple of journals, and inside the journals, it was like, oh my god! If I read it even today, I'll start bawling, you know, because it was like, I just wish I had a friend, you know what I mean? And it's just like she was just crying out, and and so to answer your question, it's what what. What drives me is that what would have happened if she had a way to express that? What, it, what, it, what, would, ha- what would have happened if she had a way to write out her thoughts and to see that she wasn't, you know, to, sh- to see that she wasn't alone, you know? Like, mm. I, I mean, I know it's kitschy and kind of cliche but like what if she just was able to like bi- bi-directionally link to like the good memories instead of just holding on to the bad memories you know and and so that's that's where a lot of my drive comes from man it's just it's it's knowing that there's people out there that don't have a way to write or or that they don't have a way to think better and and if 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 there's a direct, I mean, I'm going to say correlation between, you know, writing better and thinking better and thinking better, better writing, better thinking. Like if there's a correlation between those two, then I know that, you know, if there's a way to write in a note taking tool that is frictionless and that allows us to get to those places, then I know that people are going to start thinking better. And when people start thinking better, they start making better decisions. When they start making better decisions, they start acting better. When they start acting better, then it's just like virtuous cycle up. And I look at it like if I, if I had a responsibility, it would be just that would be that that's the responsibility that I take on is like, you know, there's gotta be a reason why I went through all this fucking shit, you know? And, and if, if, if it happens to be like, I'm, I'm not qualified to talk about note taking tools. You know what I mean? Like, I have no idea what this, like, I jumped into the Twitter tech sphere or tools for thought sphere, like in August. And I've just been like, I don't know. I'm just like barging in like, hey, what's up? You know, <laughs> but, but, but I also know that there's something powerful that's happening right now in regards to Rome. And I, I, is it, is it, is it, I, I don't know what that is. And and a, and a lot of me is telling me that it it's the community, it's the Rome cult, you know. And 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 call it what you want, have ideas about what cult means. But I look at it like, dude, like it's cool, you know. And I'm having fun. And there's a sense of community that I really feel is blossoming into something mm-hmm. where. It's going beyond just this little small like sphere within Twitter and tech and tools for thought. And that's what I would love to see. So that's my long-winded answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's that place of belonging. Exactly. I think, I think from, from how you're describing it, Lydia would have found a great place here if she was given a chance to like not, not that I'm trying to like, you know, push this tool to the for, uh, full on, but th- there's, a, there's something magical about being able to surface up good days in your life when, when you're journaling, when you're self-reflecting, uh, when you are writing the pain away. That's how I used to write a lot uh, in 
a lot of my physical notebook journal entries, I like to write the pain away. I like to, you know, it's like a metaphorical version of signing my name in blood uh, after every brain dump where I just want to write all the uh, emotions away. Yeah. And not not to make it, you know, comparative and make it, you know, be about my life, but um, I don't think I can fully understand what Lydia has been going through, but... Yeah, but, but I think from it, what she needs. Here's the thing, Norm. It's like the thing that blows my mind is okay. So, I mean, I, I should get into the story of how Rome Book Club all happened, right? Yeah. But just remind me to touch circle back with with Lydia. So, so basically, um, how this all happened was this, right? So, I'm an actor. You know, I'm a trained actor, and I was living in Los Angeles, living in Beverly Hills, and it was like, you know, I, I sacrificed everything for that. You know, and and it was like. It was just before the pandemic happened, and I remember I got I got pitched this uh, uh, web series by the producer of Lion and Slumdog Millionaire, or whatever, right? And she 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 approached me with this web series, and I read the script, and I was like, "What the fuck is this? This is the most stereotypical bullshit I have ever fucking read in my life." And it's like, "What the fuck?" Right? So I actually told her, I was like, listen, why don't you talk to the writer? Why don't you talk to the director? Like, hey, can you rewrite this character? Like, what if the character was like a rebel or like, you know, a drug addict or like, you know, dealing with real shit? Anyways, after that moment, and, and then we got into the pandemic, Los Angeles completely shut down March 15th or 16th, right? And so it was in that moment where I was like, dude, something's got to give because the stories that the 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 stories that I want to tell as a as an actor are are not being presented towards me. So I I have to figure out another way. You know what I mean? I look at it like you know, it, 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 change your approach. If this doesn't work, change your approach. If this doesn't work, change your approach, and keep changing your approach until you figure it out. You know, and and in that moment, it was like, okay, I made a decision where it's like I'm gonna Kanye this shit. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna write my own stories. I'm gonna keep the best ones for myself, and I'll sell what I can, and I'll star my own stories, right? And so that sort of got me down on this journey, and that was March, April, and I remember I saw something about Rome Research or something like that. And I think it was a Thomas Frank video, and just as I and I, I had heard about this, like months earlier but i was like whatever dude rome research what the hell is that and then i saw this video and then they shut down and they were like waiting list and i was like what the fuck is this no i need to use this i need to use this so i was pissed i actually sent i i used to, I, I was sending emails to them i was like dude i will pay you 500 bucks right now like just get me on the waiting list you know what i mean like i want to use this tool like and and so i you know i think i think Brent, me and brandon toner I love Brandon Toner, by the way, but me and him are the same. It's like I we I, we both signed up for the Believers Plan without ever using the tool before, right? And so, oh wow, yeah, you know, because it, but but I don't know what it was, but I was drawn towards this, and I think really was the the guiding push for me was like, this is a writing tool, you know, this is a note taking tool, and if I can, I need the best note taking tool. Right. And then I remember the Thomas Frank video. He was just talking about like this idea of bi-directional linking. I don't know what the hell that what that meant. Right. But I felt like it was different. And so that started me down this path of like note taking tools. And so I think it was June 9th. My Genesis block was fucking finally. Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and so I, I signed up for Rome and then I started using it and I was like, what the hell is this? You know, and I, I did the Nat Eliason course and then I stumbled upon Sonke's book. And then, and then I was reading through uh, Sonke's How to Take Smart Notes. And this was probably about August, the beginning of August. And I was reading through that book and it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, oh my God, there's something here. You know, I looked at like How to Take Smart Notes was like the, 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 the structure right? The simple lightweight structure. And then right. Rome research was like the digital application of, to make that happen. And so I was like, well, I want to put these two things together, you know, and like a good drug addict, right? Come on, <laughs> what do we have, right? Like a good drug addict, you know, I go straight to the source, you know, I don't want my shit. I don't want my cocaine cut, you know, I want poodle, you know, I want poodle, I want pure. 
And so I was like, well, I don't want to, you know, just watch Xiaomi's video. I don't want to just watch Joel Chan's video. I don't want to watch, you know what I mean? Like, I want to go straight to the source. So I signed up for coaching sessions with Sonke Arns. And mm. that was... I remember this. That was, that was, yeah, that's, that's, that was in August and September and October. Yep. And it was like, what I realized was I'm pretty fucking obsessive. Am I allowed to cuss? I'm cussing. I don't care. Right? Whatever. Take me, uh, take me. to ask that. Don't worry. Beep. Okay. We'll put a we'll, we'll put a big E on the episode, but it's fine. <laughs> um, so so I I am obsessive to the point where I would literally go to sleep listening to these obscure like Sonke Aran's interviews. Right? And I really wanted to understand what you know the Zettel Kasten was. Because I had a reason to understand it. Like, listen, you know, I didn't sacrifice everything in my life to spend the last eight years in Los Angeles. You know what I mean? Like, no, I, I'm, I know what the fuck I'm doing here. And it was like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to find the best. I'm going to do the best thing possible. And so I realized that, like, how to take smart notes. Like, he talked about an idea-generating machine. He talked about never have to, having to have a blank page in front of you again. And all of these are really appealing to someone that wants to write stories. And so that's really started the path down, how could I create a Zettelkasten inside of Rome Research or with Rome Research? And what I realized was I was stumbling into very uncharted territories. And mm. what I also realized was that my weaknesses ended up becoming my strengths. For instance, the fact that I didn't go to college, that I didn't do well in school growing up, like, like, don't get me wrong. Like, listen, I mean, I got like a 1300 on my SATs as I was coming off of ecstasy. You know what I mean? Like I've never read a book in my life, but I, you know, I'm smart. You know, I'm, I'm, I know I'm smart, but I just, I was bored in school. Like I don't like school. I don't like being told what to fucking do. And so you know, I, I understood that like the fact that I wasn't indoctrinated in, in regards to how I was taught how to learn and how to take notes to me was like the secret weapon because then I was approaching how to take smart notes with a completely open mind, you know, and, and so basically I started realizing that I think there's something here in mm. regards to if you take this simple structure of how to take smart notes and Zettelkasten and the ideas and concepts and fundamentals and around that, and if you applied it, but not in a copy-paste sense of applying this into Rome Research, it was more like, no, Rome Research can do things that other things can't do, right? And, 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 and I, I really believe that's because it's the block, the granularity happens at the block. And so as everyone else was toying around with pages and, 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 and looking at how you could do like, you know, this, the same way of uh, an analog, analog physical slip box, like everyone else was trying to do that and just copy paste that into Rome. And I was like, I don't think that's it. And you yeah. know, I, I'm, I'm from the street. So it's like, I don't really give a fuck what you guys are doing. It's like, I'm going to figure this out because I have a reason to figure it out. Like I want to tell stories. Like I'm sick of being handed bullshit type cast roles. Right. And so coaching session, I would come back and I would start grinding away. And, you know, that's where this big reliance on this Rome cult came in because every time I'd, I'd have a question or I'd, I'd seek out information, it was like, it was always right there, you know? And it was always like people were so helpful. Like Chris, Rome hacker, amazing, you know? And it's like the, 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 the amount of encouragement that he's given me, like in our DM chats, Mind blowing, and and the amount of heart that he has, I love it. You know, I know Cato Minor hasn't been around lately, but he was like instrumental with all the CSS sprinkles that I need to help with, and it was just like there was so many people in this community that sort of like Brandon Toner, you know what I mean, Andy Henson, all these people are like pillars in the community, and each each of them played an influential role in like me understanding how to use this tool, and and it was like. I started seeing like it was working, right? And, and it was like, 
I, I wasn't doing what everyone else was doing in regards to like, okay, you know, let's take a look at the page and make brackets. I was like, no, but I think there's another way of doing it. And so I felt like I stumbled upon a simple structure. And this was right around the end of Rome Book Club 1, right? And then Rome Book Club 2 started, and I was like, I need to test this. I need to stress and test this. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I, I had developed all this way before, right? But I was like, but I, the reason I was so hush-hush about it, right? Because Rob, Rob Hayesfield was reaching out to me. He's like, let's do a Rome tour. I was like, no, no. You were reaching out. I was like, no, 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 no. Hold on. Um, and it's funny because at the time I was watching a lot of like uh, YouTube lectures about like um, 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 CERN, right? And LIGO. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, the uh, What do you call it? The, the, the Large Large Hadron Collider, right? And And they were talking about, I think it was the Higgs boson or something, right? And they were talking about how like, they discovered it, but they had to make sure for six months to see if it was legit, right? They had to test all the instruments. It was like, okay, are we tripping here or what is, what is going on, right? And so I had to do the same thing. I go, okay, mm, hold on. I mean, it works, but what the hell is it? What the hell is this? Like, I'm not qualified for this. Like, I don't know. Uh, like, there's so many smarter people around me that are like trying to figure this out, you know, and... So I wanted to stress test it. And in Rome Book Club 2, we were going through Sonke's book. And it was like, what a perfect opportunity to see if this would work. And it's what I did, you know? Basically, what happened was, I mean, this is basically the whole, whole story, right? Right. Basically, what happened was, in the first week, I was like, fuck it. Let's just have a meeting. And so basically I had like three, for the first two, three weeks, I would just set up these like meetups, like as Rome Book Club 2 was going. And I had no involvement in Rome Book Club 2, right? I was just kind of there. And, and then I was like, hey, let's, let's talk about Rome, fund let's talk about Zettelcast and Fundamentals. And so I'd set up a, a private Zoom chat and like five people would show up, 25 people would show up, another 25 people would show up. And I would just talk about what I was, what I was developing, right? And there was so many fucking people that were like, you're wrong. You're wrong, Bo. You're wrong. Oh, oh interesting. yeah, dude. And it was just like, okay, but show me another way. Or I was like, okay, try to break it, right? And, and don't get me wrong. All of that was so instrumental because to me it solidified like maybe it doesn't – maybe, it, maybe you know, maybe this is working. Maybe this is right. And so – what happened was after about the th third or fourth week, I was like, okay, okay, something like something's got to give. And so I was like, I'm going to set up one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Right. And this is what, this is, this is the sort of like nail in the coffin. Like this is, this is like the coffin nail. Right. I set up 40 one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Right. And this is at the tail end of RBC two. And it was like, I was like, I wasn't sure, you know what I mean? I wasn't certain if this was gonna work, but it was just like, fuck it, let's give it a go. 40 coaching sessions, and it was like, the first one, I was like, okay, I think they got it. They had like an aha moment. The second one, oh my God, they got it too. The third one, they had an aha moment. The fifth one, the 10th one. And it was just like, there was literally two weeks where I had a coaching session every two hours, right? And I was literally messaging Matt McKinley, right? As I was eating mm. cold chicken nuggets with like two minutes between like these two and a half hour, three hour sessions, right? And I was just like, I don't know what the fuck is going on, but something is something is happening here. And Matt McKinley was just like, keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> I love him by the way. I mean, the amount of encouragement Matt's that that great. motherfucker has given Matt's me. Great. Oh my God, Matt, fucking love you, man. Um, and so, and then I was like, you know what? I have a genius fucking idea. I'm gonna be like Nat Eliason. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the Rome cult pay for my fucking house. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, so I was like, you know what? I teamed up with Andy Henson and I was like, you know what, you know what I wanna do? I wanna come up with a three-day course, a three-day weekend course, right? 
like a 36 hour crash course in how to settle casting in Rome. Because I, you know, by that time I was like, I was certain like this is the fucking way. Not only do you learn how to use Rome, you have a way to sort of have your notes in a place where you don't have to worry about that anymore. That relief and that sensation of like, oh, I don't have to worry about my notes anymore. Like that, yes. And I was gonna charge $5,000. I'm telling you right now, like that's what I was planning on doing. I was gonna charge $5,000 for a three-day weekend. It was gonna be a intense, immersive experience. And I was eventually gonna do it in person, a la Tony Robbins, right? Um, yeah. And then after Rome Book Club 2 ended, I was really gonna start ramping up for that, right? And that was about end of November, right? And right after Rome Book Club 2 ended, I reached out to Rob Hayesfield and I was like, dude, let's do a Rome tour, All right? I wanted to do a Rome tour before Threat of Palooza. And so um, we had scheduled something for December 5th or something, early, early December. And it was that fucking, it was during that time where my best friend that I grew up with passed away. And it was like, right. ouch. And so by that, by, by the way, I mean, by the way, like we're in lockdown in Los Angeles, right? And I don't have a job. I'm using all my savings on like paying rent, right? But hey, I'm doing a bunch of free coaching sessions, right? And so um, after I did the Rome tour, that sort of popped, right? And that was like the first like public demonstration of like, hey, this is what I kind of developed here. You know, I think it works. You know, let's stress test it even more. Then I did Threat of Palooza. And that was amazing, you know, a hundred tweet tweet storm without writing a single word, you know, I was literally just taking all my notes that I had taken over the past couple of months and from my Zettelkasten and did a hundred tweet tweet storm and it made sense and I did it on the fly. And Rome Book Club 3 was supposed to start and Matt McKinley and, and Matt Brockwell, I love you Matt Brockwell, and we were supposed to be co-leaders for Rome Book Club 3 that was going to start in January. And between that time from December, first week of December until January, I had to move from Los Angeles. I was living in Beverly Hills, you know what I mean? Like, come on, I had my motorcycle, like, come on, all the girls. It was just like, I had to move from Los Angeles and I moved back to Atlanta, Georgia, where I was born and raised, right? I, had, I didn't have a choice. And as I was driving, I was like, fuck all this shit, dude. I don't really care. I've got, it works for me, right? I don't like, I have a Zettelkasten, it works. I have a way to write, take my notes and, you know, organize them and, and have insight. Like, if you know anything about Zettelkasten, it's like, that's what it's about. And I had found a way to do it in Rome. And it was like, listen, if no one else, you know, if everyone's going to fight me about it, then fuck it. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? I'm just going to keep it for myself. And January 1st rolls around. And then, by the way, it's all fucking Matt McKinley's fault. Okay. First, first week of January rolls around, right? And, oh, no. <laughs> and first week of January rolls around, and Matt McKinley's like, yo, you ready for Rome Book Club 3? And I'm like, dude, uh, I don't think I'm up for it, man. I don't want to do it. You know, like, listen, all of this has been fun. You know, I got what I needed. It works for me. It's effective. I figured out how to settle casting in Rome in a way that's different from everyone else. It's like, I'm good, man. And that motherfucker was like, what's really going on? And what I didn't tell him was that I literally had like single digits in my bank account, right? And like, you know, I'm Asian. We don't talk about that kind of shit. And, but that motherfucker prodded. He prodded and prodded and prodded. And he was like, Hold on. What's your what's your email address? That motherfucker sent me two hundred dollars when oh I didn't have my. when I had single do, single digits in my fucking checking account. And and to me, it, it doesn't matter about the monetary monetary shit, right? To me, it was that action that showed me character. And he was like, "Yeah, yeah, I, I'm gonna have Rome send you some money." I found out that it, that was coming out of his own fucking bank account, and it was just. 
I was just, I, I, I was like, I'm going to do it for you. You know, let's see what happens. And anyone that was in Rombo Club 3, I mean, what happened was a miracle, right? So for what I did was, I'm sorry, Andy. Like, we were supposed to, like, do this three-day weekend, charge $5,000, buy a house, like Nat Eliason. <laughs> um, I'm not talking shit. I can back it up. Um, but instead of doing that, I was like, I'm going to distill every, I, I recorded all the coaching sessions, right? And I, I was going to just, I, I, what I did was I distilled, I had like two weeks to prepare. I distilled every one of those coaching sessions into 42 lessons, a daily lesson to talk, to walk them through, to get them through to the aha moment. Right. Yeah. And And as we were doing it, it was probably the third or fourth day. And I was basically having everyone, you know, I was, I was literally from scratch. I mean, I had an outline, right? But from scratch, I would write a script, record it, do it on Rome, record that, take that into the computer, edit it, post it into the Rome shared graph, and then also do a guided writing exercise, vo voiceover. Every day, for the, at least for the first 24 days. For the first 28 oh days, I God. think. Right? Talk about shipping 30 for 30. Yeah, that shit is tough. Okay? Like, and it was all a one-man show. So I was literally pulling in like 120 hours a fucking week doing this shit. But about the third or fourth day, I'm going to come full circle with what we were talking about earlier. It was like the third or fourth day, and I had people riding in Rome. The most profound shit. And it was just... I saw in that moment why this is so important to me. It's because I saw that people were learning who they were and they were writing about what they were going through. And it was like the transformation that happened over those six weeks was what I would have wished Lydia had, that Tay had. All the people that I've met along this path, I wish they had that. And, and so for me, it's when, when you ask me that question about, you know, what, what, you know, what do you feel about Lydia? It's like, that's what it is. That's my driving force. That's what propels me. That's what keeps me going. That's what wakes me up early and keeps me up late at night. Is that maybe through my actions, someone else doesn't have to go down that path. You know, and, and by utilizing the tool that Rome is, you know, because I saw it. I saw it in the fucking writing that people were doing. And listen, just like Chris, Rome Hacker, gave me a gentle nudge, all I did was just give people a gentle nudge like, hey, watch what happens when you write. Just watch what happens when you write. Just let the structure happen, indent with intent, right? And just watch what happens. And it's just, oh my God, dude. Like, I'm blown away by the amount of growth and transformation and the love and the, the tears, the, the joy, the excitement, the, the ahas. And at the end of the day, I'm just like, what the fuck? How am I like in this, you know, cause I can't explain it. Like, I don't, I don't belong here, you know, like man, what the, f what am I doing in this arena? And so I'm at this point now where it's, I don't know what, what this all is yet, but I know that it's fun and it's cool. And I'll continue to do it as long as it's fun and it's cool. And yeah, I mean, there was, I think it was, I, I shared this earlier with someone else before, but it was like, 
I think it was like the third, like the second to last week of Rome Book Club three. And I remember I was coming home at like five in the morning, right? And I was about to go to bed and I was like, you know what? If I died right now, would I be happy with, the, with what I've done? And it was like, I, I felt like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong. Like, no, I'm, I'm a fucking survivor. Like, I'm going to keep going. But I know, that, I know that I'm on the right path. I know that I'm on the right track. And here's the, here's the thing, man. It's, I, I, again, my weaknesses have become my strengths because I don't know all this other shit, you know? But I'm willing to learn. And I'm willing to go, you know, question things. And, and I'm willing to like, okay, what does that mean? And, and, and it's just, yeah, man, I'm just... I'm blown away. I'm blown away how all of this has sort of like happened. And, and I also understand that I've got a hypothesis. And I've got a hypothesis that, you know, it's, it's the idea of, you know, that sort of the tipping point, right? And it's about crossing that chasm where you, at the, at f that first wave is all about, you know, early adopters and innovators, right? But I feel like we're approaching this point of the chasm where you're going to have this second wave of the early majority. And, and I encourage, because there's a lot of people that are jumping ship. Like, oh, Rome doesn't do this. Rome doesn't do that. That's cool. Keep going. Keep looking for the new shiny thing. That's fine. I love it. Right? But I also know that, like, there's a second wave that's coming. And these people aren't, these people are like your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles. You know, and for me, it's I want to make sure that when that second wave happens, that they know who to go to. Choo choo train. I, that they know who to go to when they start exploring what this note taking tool is. And, and it's, I love what you're doing. You know what I mean? Your, your, your Rome FM, I think you got like Bellagio on soon. Uh, am I getting Pelagian? No, 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 no. I, I had a, I, no, I just did a Twitter space talking about the episode okay. with Pelagian and Tim okay. Ferriss. No, well, no. I think you ought to. Oh, I would love to get Pelagian I think you on, ought but... to. I think you ought to. I would love you know? to. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, that, that's, that's the, that's, that's what's happened. And, you know, I just want to be ready for that second wave of more people that are less technical and more like exploring this idea of writing better and thinking better. And I, I look at it like that's, the, that's a responsibility I'm willing to take on because I've seen in my own life as well as in other people's lives just how powerful it is to finally have a place where you can just write without having to, you know, and if you can structure it in a simple, simple lightweight structure, then you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that's where I'm at. I don't even know what to say to that because that's such a beautiful narrative to, to paint a picture of all of that happening all the way until now. I didn't know you were struggling pre RBC three. It didn't seem like it. I know, I know that you were, uh, I know you're doing Third of Palooza and I knew that, you know, you're moving places, at least from the tweets that I've seen, but wow. Um, the fact that you could still do RBC3 despite what's, you know, what's happening around you and the realizations that you've had with a, a what I call a Rome-specific Zettelkasten as opposed to the standard Zettelkasten because like it, it's starting to branch off. And I think, I think, I think you notice the differences between what is being documented with the standard Zettelkasten and the Rome specific one because granularity, like you said, is at block level. So there's granular block level Zettelkasten. Like when the slip box is, we have pieces of paper that are way smaller and that represents the atomic idea, which makes up the entirety of a page of atomic ideas, but people are still thinking at page level. That's when there's some conflict and there's some friction, but people are trying to impose that 
what they know of Zettelkasten and they impose it in a different environment, as opposed to how can I create and emerge a Zettelkasten principle from a different environment? Like there's a difference there because that one is like bottom up, one is top down because yeah. you just try to impose it, right? It's like, it's like me implementing Evernote hierarchies into Rome. It's like that, right? Except that, oh, I read this thing about Niklas Luman and he said something pretty awesome. Let me try to apply that anywhere I go. So technically, technically, I can do page level Zettelkasten in any tool. I can also do it in Rome. So th there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's actually perfectly fine. It's perfectly able. But, but if you leave it at that, there is something missing or you're leaving a lot on the table because blocks and indentation within a page mean that they result in greater dimensions and complexity and meaning. And it's so hard to articulate that. And I think you know this, like you know this, especially as someone who, like you said, like maybe you don't really have, you have like an empty canvas when it comes to learning about this field, right? This yeah. like tools for thought and note taking, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm of the same, like I came in, I didn't really care about my note taking tool, like note taking practice that much, right? Like at most it was a commonplace. And then I just forgot about it, right? I just forgot to write. Uh, I only just wrote for myself, which uh, can be a bit dangerous because, you know, there are ways to, you want to surface up the good emotions to balance out the bad. Uh, but sometimes I forget and I only surface up the nightmares and that can lead to very catastrophic, catastrophic uh, situations. But anyway, um, the dimensions that indentation can provide, combine that with like transclusion and link referencing, combine that with page referencing. So it's like, a hierarchy of being able to connect these things with each other above and below each other. And then with each other via aliasing yeah. with each other via all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So, so I think it's because, I think it's because people who look at page level Zeto Kasten cannot see that deeper layer or they do not have to see that deeper layer. There, there's a fine difference here. Or, and I think that's where you got the conflict. Or, oh. This is controversial. Let's, let's get a little controversial. Go for it. Go for it. Imagine this. I'm a, I'm a highly educated person coming from standardized educational establishments. And not only do I come from these standardized educational establishments, I've, I've also found success in the way that I've been taught and indoctrinated of how to learn and how to, how to learn things and how to note take and how to structure things, right? And typically it's very top down, right? Semesters, quarters, you know, graduate. By this time you should learn this. And so what I'm actually doing is I'm not, I'm not even talking about Zettelkast and I'm not even talking about Rome. What I'm literally doing is I'm saying, hey, Maybe the high level parts of your identity could be done better. And it's not like saying, hey, how you, how you, it's not like how you put your silverware down on the table is wrong. No, that's, that's lo very low resolution. I'm talking about the higher resolution ideas, like your identity. Like if you've, if, 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 if I've had success from how I learn, then of course, like I have an identity behind that. I have a certainty behind that. And so what I've been doing is like bottom, bottom up, by the way, bottom up doesn't mean like, Hey, it's only bottom up. No, it's like, how's the weather in Seattle? If I asked you how the, how's the weather in Seattle, you go mm, typically gloomy. It doesn't mean every day is rainy and gloomy. No, like Monday was sunny, Tuesday was overcast, Wednesday was overcast, Thursday was partly cloudy. But in general, it's pretty gloomy. And it's the same thing with Zettelkast. And it's like, it's bottom up, but it still has top down structure elements to it, right? And so basically what I'm getting at is the response that I've gotten isn't that people disagree. 
It's that it's an automatic reaction when you displace someone's high resolution certainties about their identity. And I realized that that's the exact same thing that happens when you talk to drug addicts. It's the exact same thing. Because you're saying, no, you're saying I'm a bad person. You're, 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 you're offending my identity of who I am. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just saying, maybe there's another way. Does that make sense? It's, uh, it's, that's it's, all, I think so. It, so, I think so, so. It's when... <laughs> And I and I could I can I can relate to the pain that Sonke Ahrens has faced from the from the reactions that he's gotten from tr attempting to teach people how to Zettelkasten. Because wait 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 is uh, by saying this or sharing these observations, do you think it's because they interpret it as you are questioning how they understand the concept? You are, and then they are threatened. You are. Is that? No, you're, you're, you're questioning someone's identity. You're questioning someone's high resolution, like the highest resolution parts of their identity. Because you're saying, hey, maybe how you take notes and maybe how you structure your notes might be, could be done better. That, that mm. how, how, like people have established careers on how well they are able to extract out their notes. They, they, you know, how they, how they learn. That's basically what I'm saying. It's like, this is how you learn. And when you do top-down learning, what you're saying is, hey, I know what I want. I'm going to figure it out. You've given me one semester. I'm going to figure it out. Right? But that's not how we... Is that the best way to learn? You know? Or is it better to connect all your thoughts in a bottom-up fashion that's more akin to how we used to learn as children? And I know it, I'm, I'm all over the place here, but if I could whittle it down to this, it, it's this. I'm not saying that this is, a, this is the only way. No, I'm just providing another path that... And, and, and just imagine that I was talking to a drug addict, right? And uh, okay. you have a drug addict who's like, my identity is I am this type of person, right? I have success in this, being this type of person. Whether that success is bad or not, it's I am this type of person. Maybe it's a felon. Maybe it's a convict, right? Like, why is the recidiv recidivism rate so high? It's like, no, they have an identity around that. And all I'm saying is maybe there's another way. And people have the biggest pushback and, and it's not even a pushback as much as it is a natural response because if someone comes up to you and goes hey your identity is fucked up like whoa who the fuck are you you know yeah. or not even not even that your identity is fucked up but it's more like hey how you learned how to learn and take notes could be done better and that's like the whole stability of certainty starts like shaking, you know? Yeah. And it's like, what okay. happens when shit gets shaky? You're going to find and look for, no, you're wrong. Or, you know what I mean? It's, 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 it only, it's only common sense that if you, if you are questioning someone's higher resolution parts of their identity, they're going to become defensive. And the so they seek control through defense and or fight back. You have to find some way to to go, wait, why is it shaking? If the room started shaking right now, I'd be like, what the fuck is going on, right? And it's the same <laughs> yeah. idea. It's like if someone goes, hey, maybe there's a better way to take notes when you've built your entire life around this specific way of top-down structure where it's like, I'm going to find out what this means and figure it out this way, then of course the reaction that anyone that goes, maybe there's another way is going to receive is going to be one of lashing out, but I don't look at it, I, I'm not coming from a place of where they're lashing out and it's personally attacking me, as much as it is they're lacking out because the room is shaking and they're like, what the fuck? You know, and again, this is sort of, I look back at like, why am I so good at what I do? It's because I'm not qualified for it. It just happens to go, I'm able to relate this to the exact same problems that someone that is on the halfway house before they go back to jail for three strikes. I understand what that is. You know, it's the same thing as like a drug addict before they go into rehab. It's like the same idea. It's they have an identity. 
around what they do and if they're willing to look at another way of doing it that could be more effective, that could be, you know, integrated, then, you know, it's a whole new path. And I look at it, it's, it's a one degree change too. I mean, I'm not asking for a lot. I'm just saying maybe there's another way. And it's just like that one degree, boop. But over time, it, it, it ends up at a different destination. And that's, so all I'm getting at is talking about a Zettelkasten is very, tectonic plates shifting. And the reason for that is because it's much easier. It's like, I've realized that it's much easier to go, I'm gonna cherry pick the things that work because I don't really wanna learn how to do all of that. But I'll take mm. this, I'll take this, I'll take that. And then, and, then, and then they do it for two months and three months and then it doesn't work. And of course it's not gonna work. You didn't, you have to take the sweet with the sour, you know, you have to take the good with the bad. I hope that's clear. It's very controversial, by the way. Really? I don't think it is. I, I noticed the observation because sometimes people would revolve their entire learnings or their entire methods of procuring information, getting insight, etc., from these key names, right? Like, oh, building a second brain, or oh, a Zellcastin, or oh. <laughs> I love Andy, by the way. I think Andy is top notch. Yeah, Andy's great. Um, uh, or always citing Andy's notes, right? Yeah. Like as like a reference, yeah. right? Um, but it makes me think that one, you, you now have an identity that is dependent on this external source. Yeah. Right. So. That, that's nothing wrong with that because you can always re you can always replicate that right you can always replicate that because emulation is another way of learning right but that's incomplete I I feel it's incomplete right if I like if you if you meet me for the first time and I tell you I write all my notes like Andy I learn like Andy I have a website like Andy you can look in my digital garden at whatever whatever dot notes dot Norman dot com whatever <laughs> yeah. right okay you will now associate me with Andy and now your perception of Andy is basically how you will think I think as well, or how I will learn, which means that without Andy, who am I? And that's where the identity part comes in, right? Right? So how I learn or how I will, because even, even, this, even the sentence, how I learn is a bit strange in this context, because it's not, it's not how I learn. It's more like, how I observe. That's, that's a stronger sentence here. I, 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 think, I think so. And you can probably disagree with me. I think how I observe, because that's the foundation of how I learn. Because I must observe something, or I must absorb it. I must observe something before I can initiate the process of what will I gain from this experience? What will I gain from spending the next two seconds thinking about the following, right? That's, what will that's emerge? a fleeting note. That's a fleeting note in the Zettelkasten. And it's just like, right? yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is very important. There's a there's a fundamental difference between observing and learning because you can observe like everyone observes the same in terms of like physicality. It's like you have your you know your few senses, right? Your your sight, your smell, your touch. Uh, although most of those are mute because we're stuck at home, so you're only just limited by the what yeah. you see on your screen yeah. and you know your headphones. Um, but when you get into the granular things, it's more like what are the frameworks and principles and the different methods that emerge from the inner workings or the inner cities of yourself that will play around with those observations and will create or will result in a thought, right? Like that's, but it, let, when you're let, trying to, let me just say this though, right? Cause what I've realized is it's easy to go if it doesn't work, it's this person's fault. It's easy to go, uh, if it doesn't work, it's not my fault. It's this person's fault. And then it's also- I hate that yeah, so much. Yeah, but, 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 but it's natural, you know? It's like, it's how we've survived up to like all these millennia. But also I wanna say this too, it's like, we need to remember that, what's the number one fear 
Like in all the polls that they do, like what's the number one fear? It's not, you know, fear of heights. It's the fear of public speaking. And it's just like the minute that we have to go, this is what I think, then what we're doing is we're, we're putting what we think into the ether where it's going to be judged. It's going to be objectified. It's going to be loved and liked and encouraged or hated. And I go, to me, I think it makes so much sense why it's easier just to go this or that instead of going, this is what I think. Because the minute that I go, this is what I think, then I'm literally becoming the most vulnerable that I can ever become. And especially if it's really an original thought. And to me, that's, that's what I've seen with Rome Book Club is mm. the transformation of people going from what we're talking about, right? And then by the end of it, they're sort of coming down and then they finally get to that point where they have this, their chest opens up a little bit, their back straightens, their shoulders go back and they can confidently go, this is what I think. Oh, have they embraced their blocks? Is that, is that no, one way of putting it? It's because they see that they can back up what they think by writing in a frictionless note-taking tool. And what I mean by that is, you know, Sunke would always tell me, he was like, you want to forget about the tool and just focus on the writing. And that's, if you, listen, this is controversial as well, but I don't use any double brackets, like hardly ever when I'm writing, when I'm free mm -hmm. writing in my fleeting notes, right? And the reason for that, because I've never seen it be an effective way of note taking. And what I mean by that is I've seen everyone's attempts of trying to wrangle in and organize, you know, after every word, I'm going to do a bracket and after every word, bracket and bracket, bracket and bracket. What I... What I've realized is that with Rome, if you just write and you just hit enter and you just keep writing and you hit tab and that'll indent it and you keep writing and you hit tab again and you can start seeing this automatic structure that happens within the sort of, you know, workflowy style of working. What happens is you're able to write in a way that if I want to organize it, I can organize it. But if I don't, it sort of organizes itself. And then if I nest everything underneath the, a top level parent block, what happens is all the work that I've done in regards to how I came up with this crystallized permanent note thought shows me that I can be confident if I present what my thinking is to the world, I can defend it. And that's where the self-confidence is coming from because now people aren't going, this, I'm not doing a book report. Oh. I'm not like, I'm not doing a book report anymore. I'm not saying like, that's like, I'm not doing progressive summarization. I'm not doing, you know, build a second brain. It's like, no, I'm, it, when I'm reading something, I go, why am I having this thought? What does that mean to me? How does this relate to all the other notes that I have in my Zettelkasten? And then what happens is I start seeing how my note, how my thought has developed. And then not only do I see how my thought has developed, I have evidence of where that thought came from. I have all the different ways that that thought resonated with me so I can back it up if I ever need to. And then I connect it to all the other things that I already know called relevant notes. And then if you do it in Rome by using block references to a page that has all your zettles, with one click, you're able to see all the different notes that are relevant to that. And the craziest thing is that when you can start, when people start realizing the simplicity and the, and this, it's, it's literally simple. Like I'm not smart enough to fucking figure this shit out. No, I was just, I was just dumb enough to ask a different question. Everyone else was like, how do you do Rome? How do you do a Zettelkasten in Rome? I was like, no, that's not the right question. Ask a different question, you get a different answer. The question I was asking was, how can we take this simple lightweight structure and the fundamental concepts of Zettelkasten and how can we maximize the technology that Rome offers? 
And when you put those two things together, you get a different answer. And I truly believe that, listen, the Zettelkasten is still brand new, right? It's only like, it's only been around, like Lumen wrote about it in the 50s. Sonke's book came out in 2017. That's like four years ago. Rome, what Rome, like, Rome opened to the public in June of last year. That hasn't even been a year. I'm getting chills, right? But yeah. I truly, I, I, I feel like the technology finally caught up. It's like, it's like, what were they talking about? The rocket ships or whatever? They're like, we're going to send it up to space. And they're like, well, we don't know how we're going to bring it, how, how we're going to land it safely back to Earth. But we're just going to hope that the technology is going to catch up. You know? And, and it didn't. And it crash landed in, in an ocean, luckily. But what I'm saying is the Zettelkasten is an analog slip box, but there's limitations in a physical, there's physical limitations. Yeah. Right? And... What I'm saying is that in the digital realm, Rome just may have the technology to utilize that, to maximize that. And in my opinion, it has. And here's the thing. I know this is Rome FM and I love Rome and all that shit, but I'm not Rome agnostic. You can do this in LogSec. You can do this in Athens. You can do it in foam, right? But it's like I drink Coca-Cola because they were first. You know, if you want to drink, <laughs> if, you, if you want to drink Pepsi, you know, do the Pepsi challenge. But you know what I mean. Um, so all I'm getting at is, there's this is all brand new, right? But I don't have this gnawing, like hunger and desire to find the next thing anymore, and. People that I've seen get it have that same feeling as well. Because it's like that addiction to like, oh, I've got it. It's, it's not perfect. It doesn't work just like I want it. And it's just like, you know, they're not looking for that anymore because they're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Like the relief that I have of no longer having to like, like, think about this. Okay. Imagine being able, to, like, if I, if, like, if everything I know is like a stone, right, and I have to hold all these stones, it's like, um, how big is the stone that I'm letting go when I go, I have an idea or a thought, or I'm, I'm reading a book and it interests me, and I want to write a note about it, like my learning, like how big is the stone? This is my learning, you know. And the minute that I can go, I'm gonna put that down, following a simple lightweight structure in Rome, and it's just like that relief of like, ah, I don't have to carry that anymore. And it's not that, you know, I'm not worried about losing it if Rome disappears, because I'll just, I'll just uh, download the EDN file and back up into foam, or I'll back up into Athens, I'll back up into LogSec, whatever. You know, it's just the granularity happening at the block level is what matters. And to me, it's just, I am, I, I want more people to feel that feeling of like, oh, I don't have to worry where my notes go anymore. I don't have to worry, I don't have to think about like, how am I going to remember this anymore? And it's, you know, how do you explain that? I can't explain that. I can't explain what that feels like. It's like telling you, hey, Norm, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta check out the top of, of Mount, Mount Rush, Mount, Mount McKinley, Mount Everest, right? You have to, you have to see, like, I'm gonna take a picture of this Mount Everest. You're not gonna appreciate or understand what that feels like unless you go do it. And it's the same thing. It doesn't matter how many pictures I take of it. It doesn't matter how well and articulate I am of saying like, dude, this is the da 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 It's like, no. You've got to climb the mountain, you know, and it, once you get to the top, <sighs> sign the book, join the club, <laughs> feel that rush, take yes. the photograph in your mind and go, whoa, I can think of 10 people that need this.
And yeah. that is Rome Book Club, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know? I think it's the it's the weight of that emotion or transformation or the the what I call like the embodiment, like the embodied learning. Like when when your body finally embraces or tastes that experience, that you think to yourself, oh, like you know, it's like, it's like a great meal and you're like, wow, this tastes amazing. I want to share it with my friends. It's like that, right? But on a more, shall we say, a, a, more, a more, on a more galactic level where you have to be there, you have to be there to actually embody and actually embrace the experiences. And now we're seeing this in the digital, digital realm where what we're seeing on screen, the huge indentations, the relevant notes just right next to each other, parallel on the same level, um, all under one parent block where this one parent block represents on expanding it represents the entirety of all of your character and your soul and your struggles and your agreements, your disagreements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And your paths as a result of you trying to go haywire, mining this thing over and over again, all into this one block. And you think to yourself, wow, this block really represents all of what I've thought about this one thing. Um, how can I get more of it? I think it's the, I don't know what's the word for it. When you go through an experience, whether it's horrendous or traumatic or strong or extremely relevant to your life. And I, I don't know if there's a word to describe it, but I, I've been trying to find a word for it where it's the act of looking at that experience from different timelines like from different phases in your life like the act of it like the verb for it and I, I don't know what it is where when it happened it was the biggest best thing or worst thing ever in your life um before it happened if you ever thought about it it's like something in the future it's fleeting we don't know if it's going to happen or not it's uncertain right so there's difference between there right there's a difference between the character then when it happened and the character before it happened. And then there's the reflective character, which is what happened after, right? What you're describing here, and at least this is from how I'm understanding it. What you're describing here is that the Rome specific Zettelkasten or block level Zettelkasten. I wish we, uh, we need a new name for it. Seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of using Zettelkasten for this. Uh, the block level Zettelkasten is the act of trying to create this parent block which comprises all three phases at the same time. And that's heavy. That's not easy to embrace, right? Like, you're having trouble articulating it. And I think I know why, and I can't explain it to you because I'm having trouble articulating it. Um, and now that you're, now that you're expanding it. Articulate, articulate why an ocean sunset is so beautiful. Articulate the top of a mountain that you just climbed. Articulate the beauty of a rose that's just been rained upon. It's, that's what it feels like to me. It's like, God, so beautiful, but how do you explain this? Yeah, and at that point, it's, it's something that you can you can't put down in words. I don't know how I actually. It's kind of strange because we can't even articulate it now. How would you ever try to describe such an experience within Rome? Right, like there's a difference between the act of doing this Rome's little casting in there and the act of describing how you feel as a result of you doing that. Right, if you can find a way to do that, I mean, I think that'd be pretty interesting. Uh, but I feel like that is your current pursuit now. I feel like that's it, right? It's like, if you want to be the bridge between the next wave of the public diving into Rome research, diving into network thinking, diving into wanting to make those link references, diving into Zettelkasten page level and then block level, and then diving into multiplayer Zettelkasten, which is already a whole other thing in itself. Um, and... And the, the accumulation of all that put into one thing, and that is Rome. And you want to think to yourself, okay, how do I describe that to someone? Because that's like trying to describe to someone a whole book in one paragraph. Like that's, it's a bit off. Like you need, you need 
you need a lifetime to describe that kind of experience, right? Like that's that's how heavy it is. Um, and we're still we're still on that path, and I think you still are. So, you know, uh, to be honest, uh, a while ago, and I and I still had this pinned in my head, where you said that, you know, you might feel that you're not qualified, or you feel that you don't belong in this space. I have to say, let me ask you, how many people joined RBC3? We had 2,100 you know? signups. Uh, um, about 300 active. That whittled yeah. down to about 100 active by the end of it with 30 to 40 hardcore. Okay. We finished all the way to the end. So, so say 300 active, right? Did you guide all 300? from the very beginning of RPC3? No, they guided themselves. All I did was give them a nudge. They did all the work. Yeah, but all they needed was a nudge. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Right? That's why I'm so yeah, excited. I know. It's like, yeah. yeah. But that's the thing. They wanted you to give them the nudge. So isn't that enough justification to say that you belong here? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying there's, 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 you know, I'm not going to argue with someone that's, you know, got a master's degree in, you know, this or, you know, a doctorate in that or like, you know, this or that. No, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying it's like, there's. There's something powerful about having someone outside of that sphere to give an outside yeah. an outsider's perspective, and 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 that's what I really feel like this is has been is like, you know, I'm just giving an outside perspective of of doing this, and so I mean, do I feel like I belong and I'm a part of? Of course, you know, and that's but I felt like that from the very first believers call. Where after that believers call that went went around for like five hours, by the way. But right after that, I jumped on a call with Brandon Toner. Right after that, I jumped on a call with Chris Romacker. And then it was just like boom, 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 boom. And it's just, it's the community that has sustained me in this circle. And it's like that feeling of belonging is what I hope is what is felt like move like with every interaction that I have. Does that make sense? And it's, yeah. And I, I'm just giving away what was so freely given to me. It's like, no, I was, I was embraced. I was encouraged. I was, you know, given a gentle nudge. And it's just like, there's been so many people that have sort of like, you know, done this for me. So of course, like I want to do the same thing with others. And, mm -hmm. and it's like, that's the ripple effect that I want to see in this community, you know? Do you want to be the one to emit the same energy that was given to you when you joined the first believers call, I guess? It feels like that. Like with a lot of the amazing people in the Roma community are so energetic, obsessed, going into great discussions, deep dives, even people outside of Rome, like not even using it, but they're willing to participate, right? Like they're willing to be part of it because they know and they can feel that energy. Um, and you are definitely a large part of that energy. So honestly, like major props to you for, for, for soldiering on with your own interpretation of a Zettelkasten that will work at block level. And not only that, sharing that gift with 300 people. Like... With RBC2, RBC3, you know, developing it over time. It's not a book club anymore. It's not. It doesn't, doesn't feel like a book club it's anymore. Not. It's like a transformation club. It's like like, he was, like what you said, like very Tony Robbins style. Like maybe, maybe, maybe not his style specifically because I don't know. Sometimes I don't like, I don't like his face. He's a bit, but I'm, I'm really sorry, Tony, if you're listening to this podcast. But uh, uh, it's, it's the, it's that being able to track that evolution that transformation from day one to day 42 is 
is something that is very difficult, right? Like it's 42 days straight or 40 days, 42 days 42 straight days, yeah. of climbing a mountain of blocks that are yours, right? Like every step is heavier than the last because with every indentation, you're expanding upon a thought that you've had before. And you in an environment with others who are doing the same process as well are talking to yourself and saying, why am I thinking about this? What should I think next? What do I disagree with? What do I agree with? What do other people say? Why should I not listen to them? Why should I listen to them? What have they found out? What have they discovered? What will emerge the more that I'm expanding upon this one parent block? And what does that mean to me? What does that represent me? How, how does this, like if I'm in this room and I'm focusing on this one block, this block is my identity within that room graph, right? Do you know how powerful that is? Like out of the 300 that have joined, well, the 300 active, out of the 300 active that have joined RBC3, you can track a single person's journey of 40 plus days, because I'm pretty sure they've talked for way more than 40 days at this point, of transformation, tears, laughter, conversations between other people's blocks, and you there being their, you know, their guide, their sage, to bring them up to the mountain, like to bring them like as this trekker, as this guide. I wouldn't say sage. I wouldn't say that because I'm not smarter. I'm not better. No, I'm just there to sort of, I don't want to say coach either. I'm just, I'm just, you know what it is? I'm like that friend that you want in your corner, you know? And it's not willing, that, that, that's not scared to tell you like, dude, you're fucking up, right? Or that's not scared to tell you, dude, that was amazing. You know, that's, that's how I approach it where it's, you know, the, the, the end goal with all of this, by the way, I mean, if there was a litmus test of, of to see whether something was successful for me, it's how often they go back into Rome and start writing. That was my litmus test when I started was like, can I get everyone just to write in Rome every day? And can I instill that habit? And what I realized was that as people continued to write every day in Rome, they learned, it started compounding, you know? And, and, and that, that to me was like, oh! And then it was, and then literally like after, after, the 28, after the first 28 days, right? I was like, I don't know, you guys are, I, I'm just gonna let go. And that's literally what I said. I was like, listen, I'm letting go. You all are doing something that is amazing and let's just see what happens. And what happened was within two weeks, they had over, if you count all the people that did permanent notes in their own graph, we had over 300 permanent notes in two weeks in a shared multiplayer graph. And wow. I realized that if you can get everyone to talk the same language, and just imagine if it was a smaller group of like five to 10 people and they were all like physicists or they're all like scientists or they're all engineers or they're all like, you know, closure script writers or they're all like, you know, authors or actors. And it's like, if you have a small group of people that are all talking the same language and then what happens is, is if you implement a simple lightweight structure, that's all it is, by the way, it's simple lightweight structure. All it is is indenting. That's all it is. Indenting and then have a page with all the other things. That's all it is. It's very simple. You can add more complexity as you need. But if you can have everyone speaking the same language from the get-go, what happens is when they say a note-taking tool for networked thought, it gives you a little glimmer and glimpse of that. And mind you, I'm, not, I'm using only the primitives. There's no JavaScript. It's just CSS sprinkles. There's no queries. But you can add all that, all that later. But I wanted to focus on just the primitives, and it's just... Daily notes page, indention, blocks, hashtags, pages, right? And if people in a smaller group or a larger group, but if you had everyone talking the same language and you had everyone saying, hey, we want to develop this, I really feel like, I really believe that that 
is the future of the educational system. It's the future of, of knowledge management and, and productivity and insight and all of that. And after, after we got done, it was like, that was just an exercise because listen, it's a very difficult thing. I mean, the, the, the analogy that I use is like, you know, I could give you a thousand dollars a day, right? And this is like, I'm going to give you the instant gratification of a thousand dollars a day here. This is what it feels like to just do what you usually do, right? Or you can start with a penny and I give you one penny, but every day is compounded upon that. And so that penny in 16 days surpasses the thousand dollar instant gratification, but it takes time to like get to that point. Like it takes time for that compound interest to start exponentially growing. And my goal was to provide enough encouragement, fire, motivation until they could start seeing that for themselves. And that's like the 200, 300 permanent notes that are in the shared graph. It doesn't mean anything. All that was just to show people this is what it feels like if you imagined all of those notes were yours. And if you can give people a glimmer of what that looks like, then that gets people past the hump of, I don't see results. I don't see results. I don't see results. I don't see results. Boom, results. And I'm, I'm telling you, I mean, there's, there's so many people right now that I can think of, like Brother Spirit, uh, Simon Scarf, Martha Soko, uh, Carol Leather. I know I'm missing people, but like the people, they're growing theirs. Brian Pagano, like they're growing theirs right now. And I'm blown away because they're adding their own idiosyncrasies to it. They're adding their own. And that's the beauty of Rome is that, listen, you can, when the complexity happens, you can add more stuff to it. You can figure out how to solve that problem once it happens. And, and I feel like that's, I mean, I'm excited to see where that goes next. I'm excited to see what happens as more people understand how nesting works, how indention works, how block references work, how uh, page references work, how the hashtags work, how queries work. And, you know, it's, I look at it like this. There's a moment in time for things. And these little windows of opportunity don't last forever, but there are moments in time that truly change the world. And I've invested, I'm not alone in this, right? Like, I don't think, like, I'm not alone in this. Like, come on, well, I know you're right there too. But there's a lot of people that have invested everything they've got into this thing called Rome for some reason. And you're going to have people that are, you know, going to go on to the next new shiny thing and, you know, bye, you know. But there's other people that are like, ooh, this is kind of special. Ooh, I'm going to stick by this. Ooh, I wonder where this is going to lead. And there's more than a handful of times when I've just jumped on random calls with people and people are literally taking the words out of my mouth of what they think this can lead to. And to me, that's what makes me proud to belong in this Rome community, Rome cult. This is what's proud. This is what makes me proud to go, I feel, yeah, I feel like, yeah, this is a, this is a, this is something worth standing up for. This is worth standing behind. This is worth supporting. This is worth you know, staying up until five in the fucking morning, coming up with a fucking video for fucking Rome Book Club, like, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> but, but, or, I mean, even you, like, what time is it for you right now? It's 5.30 in the morning, you know, you took it a is. power nap, and it's like, why? Why are you doing this? Like, your channel's called Rome FM. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? You know? <laughs> I, I don't know. I right? ask myself that all, right? all the time. But I, you can't deny, I can't deny that that to me showed like when was the last time you saw an obsidian fm 
When was the last time you saw a, a Notion <laughs> FM, like an Evernote FM? I'm just, I'm just talking shit now, but it's like, you know uh, what I mean. Jimmy, there is a, there is an Evernote podcast, just so you know. <laughs> but they, they stopped for a while. Uh, <laughs> shout out to them. I actually, I actually listened to that show quite a while back. Uh, if they're listening, hi guys, <laughs> big fans. But yeah, I know what the you mean. The <laughs> guest is talking shit, not the host. But you know okay. what I mean, though. It's just like something has to explain it, and I feel like some of us were wise enough to catch on to this thing and it's like did anyone think youtube was going to be what it is now did anyone think podcast was going to be what it is now like long form content where you get to like really learn and like experience things like no it's like i i just look at it like there's something special happening and i don't feel alone in being someone that's invested everything into seeing it succeed and also being there to nudge people along to like, yeah, yeah, explore it, figure it out. I look at it as in this physical universe that we are in right now, there is this emerging universe coming out and it's about to move. And I want to be part of it. And I don't know how. But that, that represents how grand it is that I cannot completely comprehend it. So I will try to, you know, but you articulate feel that too, a though. mission around it. Yeah, I you feel, feel it. Yeah. What is it? What is it? I, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> it's this energy. It's just like, it's that energy. That, that energy that, it's what compels, yes. Yes. it's what compelled Chris to give you that nudge. It's what compelled you to talk to Brandon after the Believer's Call. Yeah. It's what compelled the Believer's Call I'm to be five chills. hours, right? It's yeah. just it's just the energy, right? Yeah. It's just the energy. And people can explain it as like, people can just simplify it to like, oh, I just drink it in Kool-Aid. Oh, I just obsessed with Rome. No, no. Like I did this, I've been doing this show for two seasons, like coming up and and never have I ever been so excited about doing an episode for a show where I cannot expect or I cannot predict how the conversation will go. It is as unpredictable as the movement of the universe emerging from whatever the hell my brain is. And let me try to articulate that into a Rome graph. No amount of indentation will be enough. An infinite amount of indentation will, be, will never be enough for describing the energy that I have every time I talk to anyone about Rome research. That is how insane it is like like you want to try to articulate that you can't you cannot articulate infinity right but you can't share infinity you can't hold infinity right that's that's what i'm trying to say here like that's the that's the closest metaphor i have to holy shit i'm so excited about this tool i can't wait to see it in the future so you know props to the rome research team for being able to create something that is so fascinating can i add that, one thing though yeah is please. that I think that's our responsibility to make sure that we don't, that, that we protect this as well. Like not in a, you know, but I, I just, I don't like grifters. I don't like people that, you know, that say, hey, I'm going to market you something, you know, and, or hey, do this crash course. And has 100,000 people experience Rome for the first time and then they get dropped on their head. You know what I mean? It's like, no, it's like what I've experienced and what others have experienced is something so profound that I don't, I want to make sure that when people experience Rome for the first time, like they have that sense of like, oh, wow, like that I had. You know? Uh, okay. Yeah. I think I know what you're trying to get. Yeah. Okay. You, you know, I, I just don't want, I don't like it when others are sort of like peering in and they go, oh, look at these sheep. Let's, let's shear the wool off of these sheep. I'm like, no, like I'm from the streets. Don't fuck with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, no, I will not accept these grifters anymore. You know, not after what I've experienced over these last couple of months. It's like over this last year, it's like, no, if, 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 you have a grifter that's coming in and saying, hey, do this. Like, no, fuck that. No, you want you want to, you know, it's like, learn from the Rome cult. Re learn from the community here that has, has been here. 
You know, that is, you know, like if I have a, if Tracy Winchell, if you want to learn about journaling, go to Tracy. If you want to learn about JavaScript, go to David Vargas or Rome Hacker. CSS, go to the, you know what I mean? It's like, no, we have enough people here that, you know who I love? I love Abe. Hmm. Right? Oh, it's great. You know why? Because that motherfucker doesn't ask for anything. The amount of work that, like, if you ask any fucking question on the Slack channel, like, boom, he's right there. Boom, he's right there, answers it. And not only answers it, it's like thoroughly answered. And to me, I go, that's special. And he doesn't do it for the limelight, he doesn't do it for that, but he's not alone. There's so many people that are doing that. And then to see a grifter come in and go, this is what it's all about. Like, fucker, I haven't seen you at all. Where have you been? <laughs> Where have you been? Who the fuck are you? You know? Like, no. I am not going to let you trample over fucking people that are too humble and too just genuinely kind. Right? Doing so much work for this community behind the scenes. It's like, no. And so, I mean, I, I just look at it like it, it, it's it's... I've sort of taken on that, like, no, I don't like bullies. You know, I don't like bullies that are coming in and trying to, like, make a buck off of what we're doing, of what this special community is, you know? And it's like, I, I, I'm just, I'm protective of the beauty of what this is, man. It's, it's special. And I don't know, man. I don't know. I just don't like bullies. I, I, I get the feeling. I, yeah. I do. I, I hate bullies as well. Like, But do you get what I'm saying, though? Plenty. It's like, you know, there's... The community, the community doesn't belong to a marketer. The community doesn't belong to a, a marketing scheme. In my opinion. And it's... This is something too special to... to be ransacked by a bunch of people that are saying, how can we make money off of this? Right. Like it's like making profit off of set constraints, right? No, like if you, it's like, it's like, it's like giving a fucking, it's like giving, giving a, like giving a swirly to some kid and going, give me your milk money. That's how I look at it. Maybe that's too grandiose or too crazy, but it's like, no dude, it's like, you can't pick on fucking people, you know? I don't know. Yeah. Let's be careful of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, of don't, don't get me wrong. Like, listen, there's like people have to make a living and I'm all about that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to monetize this yet. I think I'm going to make a YouTube channel. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do, but it's like feed the community, feed the Rome cult, you know, make it a win, 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 you know, don't just, you know, if someone's just going to come in and snipe, you know, boom, I got mine. Bye. It's like, dude, that's not cool. Yeah, yeah, okay. If you put it that way, it's a lot clearer, especially when, especially when no one benefits. It's like, it's, it's pretty obvious that it's just like a business coming in, doing something Rome research related, and then like exiting back out. Um, not that I'm going to point out anyone in particular. I can't think of anyone right now, but... I can see that happening more often. So it's more of a duty to protect the community and ensuring that they still have those infinite possibilities when they're exploring Rome. And then not be, you know, not be hit by these like flashing billboards going like, oh my God, this like, you know, $10,000 Rome research course is going to get you all you want in like one go, just pay your money up front. And then all of a sudden you're just given like 20 videos and you leave, right? It And they come and they go, and these are people that we don't know. It's, it's, it's like, it's like corporations setting up shop to set up shop, not to make friends, right? Like they're just there to be transactional. It's like that's that's the worst part about it, right? I I I, I mean, you you're probably more involved, or like you probably observed it a lot more than I have. I don't think I've seen it that much, but if we're seeing the signs now. That's probably one of the, the disadvantages of being able to observe the new wave of people coming in because we're not the only ones who've observed that new wave of people coming in. We're also seeing 
these, you know, people trying to make a profit. And that is what it is. But that means that we need to actually spend more energy to protect the people that we love, to protect the people that want to use this tool to help save themselves. I think it was and, a precedent that was set. I think it was a right. precedent that was set. And we've just started reeling that back. If that makes sense. Right. It was like once the precedent is set of where, hey, we can come in. Here's, you know, this and like we're going to shear all the sheep. And it's just like that's the precedent. And like, oh, OK, everyone needs to do that. And I'm like, no, it's like. Like, do it, you know, but do it within the community. It's like, hey, like, yeah. for instance, like, l listen, like I, I reached out to RJ Nestor, who has who has a great course through you know all the different times i've seen him inter interacted with him and seen how everyone else has been like in the community that's like praising him and it's like i said dude you think you can hook us hook up rome book club four with like a couple of your videos for free and he's like yeah of course he's giving us seven videos for free you know what i mean and it's like that is what i mean it's like no we have enough people in the community it's like no make it a win-win-win for everybody you know not just Someone that's, you know, does that, does that make sense? And it's just like, that's what I love. That's what I want to see more of where it's like you have these people that have been, you know, around and it's like, let's go to them. You know, let's go to them. If we have a question about this, go to them, go to them, go to them. It's like a town and you just want to yeah, go to exactly. these people for different things, right? Like, yeah, be part of the town. Don't be like, you know, this like snake oil salesman that's like trying to sell you something off the street. So yeah, um, I like the mom and pop major. shops instead. Of, like I'd rather go to a mom yes. and pop shops than like Walmart. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, even though I'll go to Walmart, but it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, I'd rather support the community. Definitely. A major advice there for any Roman listening to the show right now. Honestly, we'd welcome you. Are they still listening? <laughs> I, I, I guess so. I, I didn't, I didn't piss most them of the time, yet. a lot of actually quite a number of listeners actually listen all the way to the end. So you know, it's quite a quite a special thing. Where we <laughs> the, the length of time on this episode is probably the longest one I've ever had. Uh, but definitely <laughs> very very special. Um, and you actually just reminded me that uh, we are coming up on time. So, uh, Bo, with that in mind, I have two questions for you, and one of them is catered specifically for you. But the first one is, what does Rome mean to you? Rome is a ferry. Ferry. There's, it's a ferry. So I have a vehicle, right? My vehicle is my art, my, my craft, the craft of acting, storytelling, you know, get, gathering people around the fire to, to show us how to live, show us how to, you know, the meaning in life. That's my vehicle. And that's been my vehicle for the last decade. But I realized that there's a body of water that I can't cross, even in this vehicle. And so March of last year is when it really started, where I was like, I needed to be able to cross this body of water, you know? And Rome has been that thing where my vehicle has gone on top of the ferry, and the ferry is carrying me across this body of water. And when I reach to the other side, it's like I can hit the ground running. And to me, it's in essence the tool like aspect of all of this. And that's that's my that's the strongest analogy for me. And it's along the way, I just, you know, happen to really enjoy giving what I've learned away, right? And I, I just love the community that's around there. And I just, yeah, I just, I want to see this thrive. And I want to be, you know, I want to be on the mountaintops, like screaming and yelling. I want to be on every housetop, like, you know, uh, the Johnny Appleseed, like, no, dude, this is it. This is it. And I also know that it's a season in my life. And, and I really love that. And I think this is all meant to be just how it's supposed to be. And above all else, I'm grateful for that. Fantastic. That's a beautiful answer. And the final question is, normally I would ask someone, I would ask guests, um, how would you describe Rome to someone who hasn't started using it yet? But I think I have changed this question a bit as this conversation has emerged. 
how would you describe Rome to Lydia? Huh. Hey, bitch, do it. <laughs> oh, I fucking miss her, dude. Oh, dude. She sounds like an amazing person to know. No, she's fucking <laughs> phenomenal. Um, yeah, how would I describe it to Lydia? It's like... Hey, babe. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. Just give it a try. Yeah. That's what I would say. For anyone listening, if you're, you know, still on the cusp of figuring out whether you want to try Rome research or not, just give it a try, I think, no matter your situation. I'm not sure if it will save your life. I'm not sure if it will make you better. I'm not sure if it will make you happy. But I think trying it out would make you want to confront yourself and talk to yourself more. And Embrace the entirety of the colors of your soul. At least it's one metaphor that I would like to use uh, there. And sometimes if we don't have that, we may lose ourselves on the way. Sometimes it's our life. Sometimes it's something else. Sometimes it's a part of us that's missing. You know, something like Rome, if it could help you with that way, I honestly encourage you to try it as well. And uh, with that being said, ending it on an amazing, powerful note from helping those around the world to write more block level insights for themselves and also connecting with anyone else, you know, from, from researchers to people with master's degrees to strippers all around the world. And even, and I had to search this up, uh, the character from Crime and Punishment, I believe is called Sonia. Sonia, I think that's the person you're, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I had to. Uh, keep that in there uh, because I didn't want people to know that I didn't read Crime and Punishment because I'm not <laughs> an uneduc uneducated man. But anyway, um, with all these varieties of people coming into play in the Roman community, I think they all have a place in this city to talk with all these amazing people who are known for this one beautiful thing that they have provided to the rest of the community. So, you know, if you're here to create win-win situations, um, everyone here is, he everyone is here to welcome you, uh, especially Bo. So honestly, with you doing RBC3 and RBC4 coming up soon, honestly, thank you so much. Like if we want to, you know, reach out to you, talk to you um, about anything in this conversation, what is the best way to do that? For, for, for me, what's the best way? Yeah. Uh, just yeah. DM me on Twitter, at Bohan. Join Rome Book Club 4. Just write in Rome. <laughs> and All I'm right. around, you know, I'm around. Definitely. Very, very active uh, on Twitter. So, you know, you know, you can just add him to start an amazing conversation. Uh, amazing energy. Uh, it is 6 a.m. Uh, on my side, and I am awake as fuck. So... Oh. I don't know if I, sh I shouldn't even sleep. Like, I don't think I should. I think I'll be, I think I'll be awake for a while. Like, I think I'll just be in my own room graph for a while. So, uh, any Thank you. Thank final you. words? Otherwise, we are good. Thank you again. Thank you for doing this, man. And um, yeah, just, this is exciting. It's exciting because right. I know that I'm not alone. I'm not alone in the craziness of believing in this note-taking tool. You know, <laughs> and to me, I think that's what's exciting. Nerd. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, and it's so much more though. And yeah. Don't worry. You're not alone. I'm, I'm just as crazy as you are about it. So yeah. Thank you. And Thank I you, will brother. see you on Twitter. All right, brother.